everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video. I hope you're having a great Wednesday thus far. Now we're going to be looking at the Atlantic and I also want to talk about the fact that El Nino is fading as expected. So we've been talking about what could happen in the upcoming hurricane season and overall signs are just not looking good. Looking as though we may see a very active season this year. And uh, so I'll be talking a bit about what is currently going on. So looking at the North Atlantic right now, we see that storm system heading over to the UK and also uh, in the eastern part of the US. So that is moving out. But another one is expected as we head into the late part of this week. But we do see some thunderstorms still around the vicinity of Florida, near Cuba, as well as the Bahamas. For the Caribbean, much is not really happening. Some passing clouds bringing some afternoon showers to some areas, though not widespread. Uh, pretty much breezy in some areas with those sunny skies, perfect weather for going to the beach or being by the pool. But down to South America, we see that uh, there are all those white dots indicating lightning strikes, so it's a bit more active down there. As we're going to be heading through the rest of today, this is a look at the Euro rainfall forecast. So a little bit more rainfall activity within the vicinity of parts of Florida and the Bahamas. A few showers may move by the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, uh, even parts of the southern Bahamas and near the Turks and Caicos Islands as well, headed towards Hispaniola, Puerto Rico. Lesser Antilles should be dry and quiet for the most part for the rest of today as it relates to rainfall activity. Same story for the ABC Islands. As I said, for South America, it is a little bit more active down there. So some areas likely experiencing some afternoon showers and thunderstorm activity. And then for Central America, dry for the most part. A few showers may move by parts of Panama, Costa Rica. But for most areas, going towards Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, parts of Mexico, Belize, even the offshore islands as well, much is not expected as we head through the rest of today. Now... The hurricane season is up ahead, so it doesn't begin very, very soon. However, signs are pointing towards an active season, as I mentioned earlier. And the water temperatures are definitely starting to uh, change in the Pacific. So the ENSO region, ENSO stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. And there are three phases. We've got El Nino phase, the neutral phase, and La Nina phase. So we're currently in an El Nino phase it is slowly fading away but basically el nino is when there are above average sea surface temperatures over in the equatorial pacific and then the neutral phase not el nino not la nina just within uh just between both of those neither of the phases there and that's usually when we're transitioning from one phase to the next now la nina means worst case scenario for the atlantic basin as it relates to tropical cyclone activity because usually la nina is what results in a more active season however with last year being el nino what caused the season to be so active is the record waters out there very warm surface waters and that's kind of the primary fuel needed to get these tropical systems going so it was very warm last year but there was still the effect of el nino many systems stayed offshore and uh, we saw an increase in wind shear in the latter part of the hurricane season. A lot of systems did not manage to develop. A lot of uh, disturbances didn't manage to develop in the latter part of the season. However, this year, we're heading in La Nina. So, this is a look at the latest uh, sea surface temperature graph. And there we have that black line, that bold black line that is representing 2024. And all those other lines are previous years, most recent 2023 with that mustardish shading. And we can see that this bold black line is above all of the others. So currently record temperatures across the North Atlantic. So the higher up we find the line, the higher the temperature is. And compared to other years in the past, we can see that this line is way above them. So the water temperatures out there are well on their way, plus La Nina, when there is reduced uh, strong vertical wind shear, which is usually what helps to prevent systems from intensifying much. As we look over into the Pacific as well, this is a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly. And when we see a lot of these orange red shadings, that is a sign of above average temperatures. Meanwhile, the blues indicate below normal temperatures. The whites mean that things are pretty much neutral or average within that particular area. But look over in the equatorial Pacific. Look at that area of all of that blue shading indicating below average temperatures. So that means things are cooling off there slowly. But surely we're transitioning from El Nino, which is the warm phase, 
to La Nina, which is the cool phase. So cooler waters in the Pacific usually results in a decrease in wind shear in the Atlantic Basin, which in turn helps out the hurricane season in terms of seeing a lot of development. Meanwhile, with El Nino phase, usually there's an increase in wind shear in the Atlantic, which usually helps to hinder a whole lot of development. So we can see that things are slowly cooling down in the Pacific as we're going to be transitioning to a neutral and eventually La Nina phase of that Enso region later this year. But these are the names for the upcoming hurricane season, Alberto all the way through William. And uh, these are 21 names, but should the season be so active that the list ex uh, is exhausted, then there is a supplemental list. And the first on that list is Adrian. Now, this list has not been used since it was actually designated back in 2021. So this list, no names from this list have been used for tropical cyclones. But this season has a very interesting setup. It looks as though it could very well be a historic hurricane season and of course we don't want any major devastation but looking just looking at what the models are forecasting for later this year and seeing the setup and how things are actually starting to play out i don't think that we're gonna see a relaxed hurricane season but it would definitely take a drastic climatic event to actually suppress the hurricane season substantially i mean the temperatures are running record right now la nina phase is coming yeah it's definitely not looking good however the most that we can do is to prepare we know that we live in a disaster prone area in terms of tropical cyclones in the caribbean the bahamas east coast of the u.s the gulf coast as well central america and yeah the hurricane season begins in only a few months although we may see preseason development which means we could see a storm or two before the official start of the hurricane season though not guaranteed however one of the ways in which we stay prepared is by staying informed on what is happening and that is the reason i do update videos every single day even now in the off season just to keep you guys abreast with what is happening out there so this is something that i absolutely love doing it's become part of my daily routine i do not feel good if i go through the day without posting a single update to let you guys know what's happening so i did it last year i went through majority of the year posting videos every day and twice a day uh during the heart of the hurricane season and i'm planning to do the same this year so uh that is basically what i wanted to share with you guys in this update video and as usual if you have any questions do feel free to leave them in the comments but overall i hope that you found this video to be very informative and remember to always be weatherwise